Welcome to this video. Yeah, this is um, a video about two games I played um, Yeah, just the last weekend, so yesterday and the day before. One was played in um, the Dutch League and um, the other one was played in the German League. So I always get requests to, um, to show my over-the-board games, so um, yeah, I'll show the games, at least um, the two critical moments um, and this um, yeah these games really show that sometimes just um, one position one critical moment can decide a game um, yeah the first game here is from the Dutch League played um, on Saturday so it um, was the first of the two games and uh, we see here the position on uh, move 39 I just uh, took the pawn on a5 with my queen and um, black now played rook to f6, attacking the bishop. Okay, let's um, have a look at this position. White is a pawn up. So I've got five pawns and uh, black's got four, so I won a pawn. Essentially, the a5 pawn was uh, was just taken. Um, but the position is, of course, very concrete. There are <clears throat> pass pawns, the d pawn for white, the b pawn for black, and also the a pawn, which is the, the long-term asset. In the short run, the d-pawn is, of course, a quite quite dangerous force. But um, a main issue in this game is that this bishop is uh, much stronger than this knight, which is limited by the pawn on g3. The knight um, really doesn't help much. Black also has a weak king. His pawn cover is somewhat stripped. But um, all in all, this is a very concrete position. Black attacks this bishop, and... Um, the very important point about this position is that my opponent was down to 24 seconds, exactly 24, and I had more than 30 minutes left, and it's move 40. So I um, just need to make one move to get um, to get uh, the time control completed, um, and also he, of course, but he's only got 24 seconds. So my, my my goal was to to make a move that sets him yeah some concrete problem maybe even some trap if possible so that he's got problems to make the correct move in this 24 seconds so I didn't want to invest so much time so that he can think on my time um, but in fact in this position I had um, a very strong move available which I only um, yeah saw and uh, not so but shown to me um, by the computer um, if you have some time on your hands uh, then try to calculate this position white has a very strong move if you find it it would be it would be very good um, because it's a really um, somewhat counterintuitive move in fact um, white has got two strong moves here but I played none of them I played um, I played um, a worse move which, in fact, won the game because it it had a very good. Um, oops, I need to switch this off. It had a very good um, good point to it. What I played. Okay, I first I'll show you the the best move. Um, so if you want to think um, further, pause the video. The best move in this position is in fact the quite stunning move rook f1, which is um, is really really strong. The idea is that it yeah, sort of prophylactically covers f2 so that after rook takes f5, white can play d6 and now will promote the pawn. There's no way for black to stop the pawn from promoting. He cannot um, do anything against this. The, the rooks are placed in such an unlucky way that, that there's no way to stop the pawn. If black tries this move, to um, yeah, sort of provoke white into taking, then white has the very strong move queen c7 and black can resign. The pawn simply promotes. Rook f1 is is, is extremely strong. I didn't uh, I didn't think of this at all. I mean I, I sort of noticed that the pawn is hard to stop, but um, I really um, didn't. Yeah, this didn't cross my mind at all. Rook f1. There's another strong move which I which I saw, but I didn't really understand why it is strong. 
<laughs> to be honest. D6 is another strong move that I also considered. The problem is, of course, this, this bishop is hanging, and black will take on f2. If I just, if I, if I take here, it's, um, it just collapses on f2. This is just a problem. Black will take here, and then the f pawn is, is hanging multiple times, and black is even better in this position. So, this doesn't help. But what I can do is, I can play, I can play d6. Which is which is strong. I saw this, but rook d6. After this, I only thought about uh, the the end game. Of course, white can take here, take here, and grab here, and he will will end up with an extra pawn in a rook end game. Um, in fact, black has even this move, which is probably stronger with counterplay. But um, this was enough to convince me uh, that I shouldn't play this because. Quite simply, um, this this kind of uh, stuff is just a draw, three against two. No way to win this against uh, decent defense. I saw this, and okay, I saw d6 is, isn't so great, but in fact d6 is strong. d6, rook d6, and here white has a strong move h4, which I didn't think of. The problem is that, okay, this d6 just just drove the rook away so that this is not threatened. He cannot return because of rook d8 winning the queen. And this is um, yeah, a problem. White just threatens h5 to destabilize e5 and probably yeah, probably this is uh, is not 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 a defensible position. At least it's very very tricky to to play. Um, yeah, this is also strong. Um, yeah. The thing is, after I looked at this about two or three minutes, I saw I saw another interesting move which I played. I played rook to b1, and the idea behind this move was that I saw that black now can can draw with with rook d2. But um, my idea was that he maybe is not able to to work this out in 24 seconds and instead choose to take on b1 because there's a, a known tendency then if you if you have very much a uh, very very little time then you often opt for simple moves like taking pieces exchanging or giving checks and um, this is another case i just hoped that you couldn't couldn't really work out if rook d2 or something is a good move after all if you look at this this is the best move this pawn is now hanging um, in two ways of course this is also hanging but um, I was hoping that he couldn't work this out. In fact, this uh, this probably draws. Um, the line that I saw was rook, uh, bishop takes g6, f takes g6, queen to b4, and now um, rook here. Yeah. And this should oh no this this was this was really really awful what what I did here rook b4 rook b4. Of course, black needs to take first. Take take. And take here, and and this is of course a course a draw. With 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 perpetual checks, no way to to escape this as white. And this was the line that I saw, so it was sort of a draw in hand gamble. Um. But um, okay, he only had this twenty three twenty four seconds, and he let it run down to four seconds at the end, and then then took here. Probably simply because he couldn't work out in in this twenty seconds if rook d two or a two, rook a two is similar, really would draw. And now I have just bishop takes b one, and this position is, is is winning for white. I still have uh, my extra pawn, and he doesn't have any uh, meaningful attack on f two. Simply this active rook is gone, and he has no way to bring the queen into a position where it can attack um, f two. And after this, it's um, yeah just a matter of uh, decent um, technical play, which I managed, fortunately. Queen to b8. And uh, oh, what what I forgot to mention, my opponent here, uh, Evo de Grote, he's um, a player of uh, strong feet and master of strength, about two thousand three hundred forty rating. So just to put it. In perspective, he's a pretty good player. I played him 
um, last year also in, in the league and um, I, uh, I made a draw but I was in, in huge trouble. He could have easily won this game I think. So um, yeah it was nice to have uh, such a good position. Okay I played um, queen to c5 to get the, the a pawn mobile b3 and rook um, uh, bishop d3 which is a strong maneuver. I want to put the bishop on b5 so that it maybe even on c6 so that it covers the pawns and on b5 it also helps to isolate this b pawn so that I can pick it up. And this is a pretty pretty simple procedure now. Bishop here and um, b2 and rook b1 I, I just I just get the pawn. He just uh, tried the, the last um, yeah, last bullet here to get some counterplay, e4, queen d4, and I, I grab the pawn. I only need to be a bit cautious now at this moment as knight f3 check and maybe rook h6 can be some counterplay. Um, in fact, the, the cleanest win now is uh, the tactical move d6, which I didn't really, uh, really appreciate. I, I calculated this, but I forgot that after queen takes, I just saw that this yeah. move... It's not working as the rook is protected by the knight. But um, in fact, I can play a5. And this is winning as the rook now needs to go on an unprotected square, let's say rook here, and then this is winning. So um, d6 was uh, was a quicker win. What I played was uh, the, the, the safe move, queen to c1, which covers the h6 square so that the rook cannot cannot swing over. And he played tried uh, the check and f4, so the last kind of counterplay. But um, here I'm not made on h2. I have this. Oops, this was too quick. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I'm not made on h2. I can just play h3 and um, and check. escape with the king. And at the end of all this, I still have the the two um, pass pawns and. Um, yeah, the d-pawn just just decided this issue. And um, king here and rook c8. Well, it's it's uh, now that I think of it, it's quite funny if you if you look at the second game, it was uh, it was rather similar. Didn't really notice <laughs> until up to now. Okay, so uh, at the end he cannot um, do anything against uh, the pawn promotion. Um, yeah, pretty good uh, finish. Um, a really remarkable move is uh, this this rook f1, which is which is really strong in this position, and which I didn't didn't spot. I mean, my rook b1 was a clever move uh, in a from a from a practical point of view, but um, it was not uh, the best move by far. Okay, this was uh, the first game, and uh, the second game was just uh, played one day later in the German league. So um, this is the position after move uh, 31 by white, which is me, I played white again. And I just uh, took on f4, um, recaptured uh, a queen, queen trade on f4. My opponent, um, oops, I just saw that the board is screwed up, I'm sorry. Okay, this should be fine. Now, I'm sorry, I just uh, need to adjust this. Okay, um, take a look at the position. I just took on f4. There was a queen trade on f4. And um, yeah, you notice that white's pawn structure, my pawn structure is a bit a bit wrecked here on the king side, which is um, unfortunate. But I've got two extra pawns, the d pawn here on d5. And um, yeah, another extra pawn is the b pawn. Which doesn't look too impressive, admittedly. Um, it's black. Black's move now, and um, in this position, which is really the critical position of this game, he played um, the move rook e8. Um, now, in this position, please uh, take a look and um, try to work out what what White should play here. I'll um, stay silent for a couple of seconds so that you can. Stop the video if you like. Yeah, in fact, um, white in this position has um, a winning move already, 
which uh, straight straight out uh, wins the game. And um, this is rook takes b5, the exchange sacrifice. A takes b5. And now white has got, oops, white has got two connect, uh, two pass pawns, which are supported by the rook and by the bishop. And just, this is uh, too much. I'll show it, um, I'll show what happened further, but I wanted to show what black should play in this position. He absolutely needs to capture on b2. Um, the problem was that my opponent here, um, Frank Rehfeld, is about uh, 2 one fifty rated. Um, that uh, that he that he didn't like this position, which is understandable. White um, white is better in this position, but the problem is that simply um, the alternative what he played um, just lost the game outright. So um, he needs to um, he needs to play this um, no matter what. There's simply simply no um, no alternative. The the problem is um, in this position it will lead to a bad rook end game. For example, rook d8, rook d1. Yeah, probably rook d6. I'm not sure. But um, at the end, there will be an end game of this type, which is uh, better for white, maybe winning, but it's uh, it's still a rook end game. So black has uh, chances to fight. And um, in the game, there was no chance um, at all to, to save it. This maybe loses, but um, it, it, it's a fight. Rook endgame always has a very big drawing margin, so you always have some chances to, uh, to maybe save it. Okay, um, in the game, as mentioned, he played rook e8, and then I could sacrifice the exchange, which I did. And now I, I made a, a pretty typical mistake, at least uh, for me. <laughs> If I see a continuation that I believe is winning or is a very huge advantage, then I um, very often simply play those moves um, instantly. I mean, if I have calculated uh, a line, let's say I, I invested five minutes and I calculated a line, then I just play out the line move by move and don't really look, uh, look at alternatives. In fact, in this position, I played the move a6 which is um which it wins the game at the end but here i had a, had a simpler continuation in fact the move d6 is um is winning somewhat quicker as it immediately takes um a8 into um, uh, um under control and um, this makes the a pawn yeah um, much more dangerous yeah how should black try to defend probably rook d2 so relatively best move. Um, then I just play a6, rook t6, and um, and a7. Yeah, there's no way to to save this. I mean, he can try to attack um, the pawns, but it doesn't doesn't really help. I can win the tempo with um, bishop to c6, and then promote. Yeah, white um, will um, will win this uh, pretty easily. I get uh, b5 and also have some ideas to play against f7. So this um, basically um, just converts the the two pawns into an extra piece, so and, and wins pretty easily. What what I saw is the following line. I can it exactly happened in this game. I saw a6. And it also wins, but the other one was just quicker. I saw this d6, rook here, d7. It's completely forced now. Rook d2 and bishop c6. In fact, I calculated up to this move and just concluded that white should be winning. Those two pawns are, uh, are too much. And also note the similarity, the bishop on b5 protecting the d7 pawn was just the same the day before. This is quite uncanny. Um, okay, so um, what what could um, could black do? Um, yeah, he tried to um, yeah use the king, but the problem is I have all the time in the world to just uh, take the b-pawn. He tried to keep it for one move, but then I could take it. Yeah, black black simply has no defense. I have uh, 
various ways to to win now. Yeah, let's uh, use the B pawn. Yeah, and now it's rook c8, the same winning move that uh, won the day before is uh, the threat. And now, um, yeah, it's all it's it's a multitude um, of, of wins, but um, I can just play king g2, strengthening the position a bit, and now I'm threatening a7. Um, in fact, if you look at this um, a7 move, this looked uh, good here even a7, but uh, the problem was that he has this check and rook here and will pick up a7 um, this way. So it's not uh, not the cleanest way to win, but King G2, what I played, just threatens A7, and he has no way to deal with that. Played F5, A7. Yeah, and now if um, if Black takes uh, the pawn, Check. then I'll Check. I'll get a new queen and yeah, and with an extra bishop and extra pawn. So he cannot take it, but I'm also threatening Rook C8. So um, he went here, rook c8, and after this he resigned. So uh, it's the same, absolutely the same. Bishop here, pawn here, rook c8, and resigns. Just the same <laughs> as in the game the day before. I only noticed this 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 now. Amazing that I didn't uh, didn't realize it during the game. All right. So we see also here one critical moment uh, decided the game. With um, rook takes b2 in this position, he could have um, this position. Um, this position. <laughs> With rook takes b2, he could have um, put up um, some much um, yeah more serious resistance, and allowing rook takes b5 basically lost the game. And this is um, actually I, I found it pretty uh, pretty surprising that he didn't take this into account because it's something that you always need to uh, think of is if there's an advanced a pawn like this on a5 and you've got this this bishop on g2 it's just the same with the bishop on g7 and a pawn on a4 then this combination uh, the 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 rook pawn and the bishop is always uh, always very very dangerous and um you always need to take ideas into account to free the pawn to yeah to make the home run if you want to call it <laughs> call it like that so rook takes b5 was the first move that i, I even uh, saw this rook takes b5 idea like four or five moves ago that this is threatening and um i was really uh, quite surprised that it didn't take on b2 because simply of this rook takes b5 idea it is uh, just forced i mean it's not a matter of getting a pawn, but you need to cover b5 because this exchange sack is threatened. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed those uh, two fragments. I didn't want to show the whole games, then this would be an hour long video. And frankly speaking, most of them, most of the stuff before wasn't uh, so interesting. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'll be back soon with, I guess, a new um, episode of um, the modern classic series, which is also I think a popular one. I hope you um, look forward to that. Yeah, cheers and bye.